Hi and welcome to my maths class. Today we are doing the summary of all the grade 11 data. Now the first question says calculate the standard deviation of the following data. In order to calculate the standard deviation you must use your calculator. You're going to press shift mode and then you're going to go down and you're going to press number 3. Then you're going to put frequency on. Now it's best to have your frequency on all the time. Usually if you use it, it benefits you. If you don't use it, it doesn't harm you. Then you're going to press setup 2 for stats, number 1 for variance. Under the X column, you're going to press 44 equals, 31 equals. So I'm pressing all the data that I have. 45 equals, 21 equals, 35 equals, 34 equals, 48 equals, 49 equals, 32 equals, 28 equal. If you look on the left hand side, you will see numbers counting down. So here it stops at 10 and if you count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, we have 10 data which means we've, we've entered in all the data. Then you press AC, then you're going to press shift and 1. We're looking at number 4 which is variance and by number 4, after you press variance, you'll see again 1, 2, 3, 4. We are looking for the sign that looks like this, which means standard deviation. On my calculator, it's number 3. And our answer is 8,877. If we round it off, then our answer is 8,88. So our standard deviation is 8,88. The next question says, calculate the mean. Now, using the same information, you're going to press AC, Shift 1, then you're going to go to number 4, which is variance, and you're going to press number 2, which is mean, it looks like this, equals to, and the answer is going to be 36,7. Now, the next question says, how many values are within one standard deviation? What they mean is, whenever they're talking about how many values are within one standard deviation, they're always related to the mean which means you're going to take the mean, 36,7, we're going to sub subtract one standard deviation, and we are going to add one standard deviation. So we're going to say 36,7 minus 8,88, which is equal to 27,82. 27,82. Then we're going to say 36,7 plus 8,88, which is equal to 45,58. Now, when they say how many values are within one standard deviation, they mean if you look between 44 and 28, how many are within one standard deviation? So, which ones are greater than 27,82 but smaller than 45,58? Now, if you see 44 falls within that limit, 31 does, 45 does. 21 doesn't. Can you see 21 falls on this side? Then 35 falls within it, 34 does, 48 doesn't, it falls over it. 49 doesn't, it falls over it. 32 does and 28 does. So how many fall within one standard deviation? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 7 values fall within one standard deviation. Now, the next question is, calculate the variance. Variance is simply standard deviation squared. So, we're going to say 8,88 squared, and we have it as 78,85. So, the standard deviation, if you square it, you get the variance. So, the variance is 78,85. Okay, now, sometimes when they give you standard deviation to calculate, it can be with grouped data. What you have to do first is you need to calculate the midpoint first. Because number one, this is group data and number two, they've given you a frequency. So first you're going to calculate the midpoint by saying 30 plus 20 divided by 2, which is going to be 25. Then you're going to say 40 plus 30 divided by 2, which is going to give you 35. And you can see it's going in tens. So this is going to be 45, 55, 65, 75, and 85. 
Now the work is very similar. Now the work is exactly the same on the calculator. You're going to press mode, number two for stats, number one for variance. But under X, you're not going to press 20 to 30, you're going to press 25. So we're going to go 25 equals, 35 equals, 45 equals, 55 equals, 65 equals, 75 equals, 85 equals. Then you're going to go back up. And once you buy number one, you press the right hand side button and now you're under frequency. Then you're going to press 5 equals, 5 equals, 10 equals, 7 equals, 3 equals, 1 equals, 1 equals. Then you're going to press AC, shift 1, number 4 for variance. And what are we looking for? Again, for standard deviation, we're looking for the sign that looks like this. On my calculator, it's number 3, and you simply press equals. My answer is 14,6. Then they ask you, calculate the mean. So you go back, you press AC, you press shift 1, you press number 4, and you press number 2. Remember, for mean, we are looking for the sign with the X and the line over it, which is equal to 46,56. Then they want the variance. The variance is your mean squared. So we're going to say 14,6 squared, which is going to equal to 213,18. Now the next question says, how many learners are within one standard deviation of the mean? So what we're going to do is we're going to take the mean, which is 46,56. We're going to subtract the standard deviation, which is minus 14.6, and we get 31,96. Then we're going to say 46,56, and we're going to add 14,6, which is equal to 61,16. Now, when they say how many learners are within one standard deviation, we're going to look at the learners from 46, so which means we're looking at this group, to 61, which means we're going to stop at that group. You see, once it's in this group, we can't really join it because we're not sure which ones are 61, which ones are 62. So we're going to go with 10 and 7. So the total answer is going to be 17. You're going to put plus 17 because it could be a little more than 17. Now, let us do the next thing. The next thing is archive graphs. When you're doing archive graphs, remember an archive graph grows. So it is adding and it always grows. It's never going to go up and down, up and down, up and down. An archive graph is always going to be like an S curve. It's growing and growing and growing. So when you are doing an archive graph, number one, you need to do the cumulative frequency. Now what is cumulative frequency? Cumulative frequency means you add up all the frequencies. So for the first one, we've got 0 to 30, it's 5. But the next one, if I say 5 plus 5, I'm going to have 10. Then I'm going to say 10 plus 10, which is equal to 20. So I'm taking basically the previous total plus the new frequency and I'm getting the next total. 20 plus 7 is 27. 27 plus 3 is 30. 30 plus 1 is 31. 31 plus 1 is 32. So when we are drawing a frequency table, what is the information that we take to plot the information? We are going to take the last value for our x and we're going to take the cumulative frequency for our y. So in this case, our coordinates are going to be 30 and 5, 40 and 10. Notice that your x value is always going up. 50 and 20, 60 and 27, 70 and 30, 80 and 31, 90 and 32. Now, for an archive graph, it has to be grounded. 
which means that you will always take the first number which is 20 and you're going to link it to a zero so your first coordinate is always going to be the very first value in your inequality and it's going to be linked to zero now we plot this information now when we plot it remember this is your x and this is your y so we're going to have 20 and 0 and then we're going to have 30 and 5 40 and 10 50 and 20 60 and 27 70 and 30, 80 and 31, and 90 and 32. Then we are going to join the dots. You use your free hand, you don't use a ruler, and you go with the curve. Now, when you have an archive graph, we know that in total we have 32 learners. So from this graph, what they start doing is, they start asking you questions like, calculate the median. Now the median is the middle. If there are 32 learners, then we are looking at the 32 divided by 2, which is 16. So we're looking around the 16th and 17th. Why am I say 16th and 17th? Because remember, from your grade 10 work, you know if the median is an even number, then you take the 16 plus 17 and divide it by 2. So from this information, we know that if I'm looking for the median, I'm going between 16 and 17. You're going to draw a line between 16 and 17, and you're going to draw a line till you touch the graph. Once you touch the graph, then you're going to say, okay, so... What is the value of the mean? So we're going to take our ruler again. From this point where you touch the graph, you're going to go down. And then you're going to see, okay, so what is the value more or less there? I know that the middle will be 45, so let's say 46 or 47. So the median is going to equal to 47. So you used your graph to get this information. If they ask you, what is Q1? Now you know that Q1 is 25%. So 25% of 32, which is 8. So you're going to do the same thing. You're going to draw a line on 8 till it touches the graph. Once it touches the graph, you're going to go down and you're going to say, okay, so it looks like my Q1 is 36. So then you can say Q1 is equal to 36. So what they do, is in the drawing from the drawing they will tell you to get information like your q1 your q3 but all you have to do is you have to know okay q1 is how many learners it's eight learners then eight learners touch the graph will give me the value for my answer right after the archive graph the next thing we do is scatter plot now let's take the information of the scatter plot what you must remember when you're doing a scatter plot is that the first one usually represents the x and the second one represents the y. So it's like a normal Cartesian plane, but all we're doing is we're plotting these points on a graph. So what we've done was the bottom, we're going to make it math. And the y-axis, we're going to make it science. Then we're going to plot. So we've got 67 more or less just past halfway and 58 then we've got 92 and 80 then we have 54 and 49 so what I'm doing is I'm simply plotting the points then I have 48 and 52 75 
and 67. 50 and 49. 80 and 73. 15 and 24. And that is your scatter plot. Now, the scatter plot, we don't really ask a lot of information on it now because it is actually the foundation for your grade 12 work. But a scatter plot simply means plotting the information on the graph. Sometimes they will tell you, what does this look like? Does it look like a straight line? Does it look like a parabola? Then you would say, I feel that this graph is a straight line graph. Because if you look, you can see that even though all the points don't touch the graph, many of them lie, many of them lie near the straight line. So in grade 11, they'll simply ask you, do you, what, describe the scatter plot? Then you'd say, it looks like a straight line graph. Sometimes you'll say, okay, it's actually, if the dots go like in a U shape, then you'll say it looks like a parabola. But most of the time, it tends to be a straight line graph. Now, the next thing they're going to ask you is how to draw a histogram and a frequency polygon. Now, when you're drawing a histogram, the difference between a histogram and a bar graph is that a histogram has group data. So, number one, your bars are going to touch each other. Okay? And number two, from your histogram, then can you draw your frequency polygon. You can't just draw a frequency polygon without a histogram. So, if you draw your graph using your ruler, most of the time they do give you the diagram sheets, but if they don't, you must still know how to. So, we got 10 to 20, 20 to 30, 30 to 40, 40 to 50, 50 to 60, 60 to 70, 70 to 80, 80 to 90, 90 to 100. Then we know we're going to go up. If you look, the highest we have is 14. So we're going to at least try to go up to 14. 1, 2, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Now to draw your bars, the first one is going to be 10 to 20, which is 0, which simply means on the 10 to 20, I've got a 0. Then we have 20 to 30 is 2. So I'm going to go up till 2 and there's my bar. Then we have 30 to 40 is 5. So we're going to go to 5. And then we've got 40 to 50 is 10. It's going to go quite up. We have 50 to 60, 14. And then 60 to 70 is 11. Seventy to eighty is five. Eighty to ninety is two. And ninety to hundred is one. Now, what you've drawn is the histogram. In order to calculate the frequency polygon, we need the midpoints. So for this midpoint, we've got 20 plus 10 is 30 divided by 2 is 15. 30 plus 20 divided by 2 is 25. So you can see we're increasing by 10. So it's 35, 45, 55, 65, 75, 85, and 95. Now when you have the histogram already, it's not always necessary to calculate the midpoints because what it simply means is that you are in the middle. So you don't always have to calculate the midpoint. You can simply draw your dots in the middle of the bars.
and in order to draw it, then you simply join the dots. Now you would notice, unlike the archive, I'm going quite straight. See? Now, the main thing is that you must ground your graph. Because this one already started at zero, what you're going to do is you're going to add one more year and you're going to make it zero. So in our diagram, we're going to add one more year. You're going to make it zero and you're going to draw your line to join it so that your graph is grounded. Now if you look at this data, this looks like a perfectly balanced data because your left and right looks perfect. But when they ask you is it skewed to the left or skewed to the right, what you need to look at is the tail. You see the tail on the right hand side is slightly longer. If you take here, can you see it's more long than the tail on the left hand side. So information like that would say that the data is slightly skewed to the right. But also when you're calculating this data, if you look in our summary under the grade 10 summary, you would see where we had had that if the mean is greater than the median, then it is skewed to the right. And if the mean is less than the median, then it is skewed to the left. So when they ask you information regarding this, you're going to use the same information that you had used in grade 10. You look at the means and you use look at the medians to determine whether it's skewed to the left or skewed to the right. Thank you for watching.